to order and do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you so much. Um, does anyone on the call have a conflict of interest? Uh, Chair, Madam Chair, before you move forward, can we just have the people in, there's an, five of us, four of us in the audience, can we just have them state their name for the record? Perfect, thank you, please do. Go ahead to the mic. Uh, Peter Mayer, uh, David Leslie, who's the president of the Condominium Association, and Tom Atkins, who is the secretary of the Condominium Association. And we also have Rayanne. We also have Rayanne Schmitz from the City Assessor's Office. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, you. Um, and no conflict of interest. Okay. Hearing none. Um, let us proceed to uh, the next agenda item. Um, which is uh, approval of the minutes from the February 3rd meeting. Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved, so moved. It's been moved, is there a second? Mm -hmm. And moved and seconded to approve the minutes of the February 3rd meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Okay, uh, item 3.1, discussion and possible action on the request from the Blue Harbor Condominium Association to grant a waiver and the release of the limitation of continuous occupancy for 29 days uh, at the Blue Harbor Condominium. Um, to the authority, you've received copies of information from uh, our staff uh, the Condo Association in Blue Harbor, as well as um, information from the from the assessor's office uh, under separate cover prior to this meeting. Um, what we are here to talk about is the 29-day clause in the original land agreement. Um, there are other issues between Blue Harbor and the Condo Association. Uh, that are not germane to this organization. So uh, we will restrict our um, information to the 29-day clause. Uh, what we suggested last time, we have discussed this at a previous meeting, and the RDA members wished to um, have additional information supplied by our city assessor. You received a copy of that uh, from staff. We'll hear from staff. And then, um, as a courtesy, we will um, let uh, either side of this um, issue um, five minutes, five, six minutes, if they have any additional information germane to those 29 days that can be um, put together. So let us begin with, um, and at the end of this discussion, this, this group can do one of two things. We can either affirm the 29-day owner occupancy clause, or we can amend the ground lease to remove the 29-day owner occupancy restriction and then instruct staff to bring back the final document for us when uh, it's gone through in detail. Um, so, Chad, two things. There is somebody that does not have their microphone muted, and we can hear shifting of papers and cups and whatever. So uh, if you're not muted, please mute yourself. And then secondly, um, uh, Chad, sure. take it away, please. So in the... In the packet, the first document is an IFC uh, information uh, for your consideration. So you, the RDA last meeting, tasked staff with going and trying to understand if the assessment values were 
uh, impacted by the 29-day clause as the first task, and the second task was to figure out what type of room tax losses might be generated as a result of the pro uh, removal of the 29 days. So I'll start out with this, and then if there is any further questions, Ray Ann is in the audience from the city assessor's office and can try to help answer some of those additional questions. Um, what I did was worked with Ray Ann's boss, who is Mike Groda. Uh, we contract out our assessment services to the Groda appraisal. So Mike, uh, in the IFC, provided us with kind of a summary of where the assessments have been from um, basically 2011 forward. Um, you can see that there is a substantial decrease of assessments as it relates to the 29-day clause. Um, in the assessor's opinion, he feels that the assessments, if the 29-day clause was removed, would almost double from 5.3 million to 10.6 million. Um, property taxes based on the 2021 mill rate would go from roughly 130,000 to 260,000. Um, we don't have a lot of data. Well, we, when Blue Harbor pays their room tax to us, it's not broken out between uh, the condominiums and the resort. However, we did some assumptions uh, based on <clears throat> occupancies and re room rental rates and came up with around 200,000 of room tax dollars that would be um, you know, lost if this, potentially lost, although some of these, as we talked in the past, may go to Airbnbs or Verbos, so there would still be room tax collected. Um, there's some additional information in the packets from each of the represented sides about what the loss of the room tax actually is, uh, and particularly from the Blue Harbor Resort. So, uh, they would know their numbers better than we would, but I think on our side of things, it's fair to say that the assessments would go up substantially uh, over the value of what they are today if this 29-day clause was not in place. So I would be, that's pretty much it in a summary. If anybody has any further questions, we'd be happy to answer them. Hey, Chad, that, that assumes that if we take the 29 days off, that everybody would opt out of working with Blue Harbor. That's not necessarily the case, correct? Correct, I believe it would be still there if they wanna have individual contracts, they could do so. They just wouldn't be pressed by government to be, have one hand behind their back, correct? They would be able to negotiate in good faith then with Blue Harbor. I guess you could say that. Well. Wouldn't we have our cake and eat it too? We'd, we'd allow the people that own these the, the freedom to negotiate with Blue Harbor. We'd get an increased assessed evaluation for the, for the government. And on top of all that, there's a chance that we can keep a stream of the room tax revenue for the locality. That is correct. And we had a, a major fairness doctrine to this thing that we put in there years ago when we got this because of the first people that came and negotiated were fearful that the, they couldn't get enough people to buy these things and come up with enough capital. So they put these things in there to make sure that their, their model would work. Obviously that didn't work, work out. That's why we have the new, the new owners. Um, David, go, go through that last one one more time. The, the initial owners <laughs> well, remember, Bert, they were trying to raise capital back in the day. And right. I don't know if you even remember the story. Then those guys all all went public and they dropped us like a stone. They left about 12 months later. Uh, okay. this, this model wasn't even consistent with the size, shape, and, and uh, uh, the numbers of their other ones, not to mention that they, they took and had uh, success ratios or occupancy rates that were higher than the American Club in the day. But you, when you think about it, how could that even happen? When the American right. Club has all these people that are vendors visiting during the week that kind of are implied to stay there. So anyways, the long story short, this thing was done to facilitate, I believe, when, when Mike Muth and these guys were helping with all this, they were doing that. Mike, I remember, even bought one of these. I had conversations with him back in that day. And this was just another thing to tie in the people that were helping support this to make sure that the financial model would work that they would have okay. access to those cars. You know, okay. 11 and then, months oh. later, so they could generate more revenue for Blue Harbor or the former owner, whoever they were, I can't okay. remember anymore. 
Okay. Okay. Um, let us, uh, Chad, are you finished with your portion? Yes, unless there's any other questions on the assessments. Are there any other? Okay. Um, if not, um, let us, and um, if you would, keep your, we, we have your documents in front of us. Everybody received them uh, prior to this meeting. Um, so if you would, keep your comments brief. But if you would like to um, say anything to the authority in the next five to six minutes, let's start with Peter Mayer. I assume you will be the speaker or you can cede your time. Uh, thank you very much. I'll keep my comments very brief because as I indicated, I would submit everything in writing in detail. I did want to just provide a, a little bit of additional information after seeing the information that we received. Um, uh, we agree completely with the uh, determination uh, of the uh, likely increase in the assessed valuation. And uh, although it might be odd for a property owner to want that, in this case, it's absolutely the case. The Condominium Association, uh, as well as a majority of the unit owners, would very much appreciate an increase in the assessment which would arise from uh, a waiver of the 29-day limitation. Uh, again, it, the, the removal of this restriction is appropriate. I do want to just briefly address uh, the, the suggestion that there may be a loss of room tax. Uh, we do not believe that there would be a loss of the room tax. So as Mr. Soxy indicated, we think this is the city having its cake and eating it, eating it too, effectively, uh, because the room tax uh, right now is all arising out of bookings from the resort. Uh, and right now the occupancy levels are somewhere between 30% and 33% historically. So we have gone back, looked at the uh, information uh, consistent, and you can see the revenues that are derived that it, Attorney Tauby provided, uh, thankfully uh, in her materials, uh, dividing by the average room rate of $450 per night for the two bedroom and the four bedroom condos, you do derive an approximate uh, occupancy level around one third, which is far below what any uh, hotel or resort property uh, ought to be uh, receiving in order to maintain financial viability. We believe that the same number of rooms will continue to be booked, uh, same number of villas will continue to be booked through the resort. In other words, there's going to be a shifting, but then also an opening of new markets from which uh, the remaining, rent, uh, remaining unit owners who choose to rent will be renting. Uh, we do not believe that the source will be Airbnb and VRBO. Rather, we've been working with another management company who is putting together a rental program that will have an outreach through different marketplaces other than just the common rent your house, Airbnb and VRBO. So again, uh, we believe that there will be additional sources and um, just a quick um, wrap up information. Uh, again, the, the, uh, the information that we have uh, indicates occupancy levels of about a third, 30% uh, to a third. Um, the net revenue that we have for some sampling is very consistent with uh, currently um, with the same that is in Attorney Tauby's letter. In other words, these units we believe are underperforming on their gross rents and uh, through uh, basically splintering the method of renting them uh, by the waiver of the 29 day rule and allowing unit owners to obtain uh, solid financing and a few may decide not to rent their units. We don't think that'll be the majority uh, from our survey of, of unit owners. Um, but the net result we think will be an increase in room tax revenue uh, rather, than a, uh, rather than a loss of any room tax revenue. Um, so again, uh, thank you for the opportunity to submit materials. Uh, most of the detailed materials uh, I've already submitted. I just wanted to supplement with, with the actual numbers of occupancy rates 
uh, again uh, so that you could have that information. Thank you. Perfect, thank you. Um, is there someone from Blue Harbor that would like to speak? Yes, this is Wendy Taubing. I'm the attorney for Sheboygan Resort Operator. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you very much for the time to um, give some further explanation here. Um, the uh, information that was sent from the city uh, suggested that it was a $200,000 a year room rental tax. It's actually $276,000. And the concern here is that if you also take into effect the state of Wisconsin publication 219 says anything over means that it's exempt from taxes. So it would be actually not just, it would be the whole 276 if anything was over the 30 days. So there's additional losses that are of concern here and I don't feel are adequately addressed. Um, another issue that we have here is <coughs> if you if you take this away, this 29 days, this loss from the income, the tax room tax revenue income would be instantaneous. You know, I question and I, I didn't see any information in the packet as to how it's been um, assumed that the condos will double in value and there weren't any comps, there wasn't any additional information as to how that has been um, determined. And if that is so, the room tax revenue would be immediate and the doubling of the value, I don't know, is that expected in you know two years, five years, 10 years? Um, also have additional issues. Um, it's stated that 70% of the room tax um, does not go to the city. However, 70% of the room tax goes to visit Sheboygan, which currently uses these funds to pay off a five-year loan to the city of a half a million dollars. So I do see that the city is actually receiving that income as well. Um, the other concern here is that if, if this actually goes into effect, and I don't have clarity on this, is are you saying that some of the units can waive the 29 day and then some cannot? Because the question here is, if this 29 day is waived, then is there a requirement, and I am asking this board for an answer on this, is there a requirement for new zoning? Is there a requirement for new changes to the villas? Because you know these were not meant to be residential. They have a uh, single building monitor um, uh, meters for all the water, electric, and gas. And currently it has the, um, the alarm system, which Sheboygan Resort Operator is the one that operates this, is one unit per building. So the question here is, are you going to, as a city, and I believe the state is also going to require changes to these villas to bring these up to code? And you know the question here is if they're having to be brought up to code, is that going to be forced on the unit owner that doesn't want this? And do we have any idea as to what exactly bringing up to code is going to consist of and how expensive that is going to be and, and how that's going to be determined? So the additional question that I have here is if you grant this or are you going to say, have a vote among the unit owners and determine which ones want it and which ones don't, or, or are you going to just go ahead and have this be put upon the owners themselves? And I think we have a owner on the phone today who does not want this, um, owns approximately 27 units and is not in favor of this, being, uh, this waiver coming into effect. So I thank you very much um, for your time. And great. If, and if, if you could answer those questions, I would greatly appreciate it. Okay, two things. Um, the owner on the, on the phone for 27 units, is that the Blue Harbor Resort proper? No, that is Sheboygan Acquisitions, and one of the owners is Marsha Forsyth. Okay, perfect. Um, all right. Um, Chuck? City Attorney, are you on this 
meeting? Are you in this call? I am. Okay. Um, and our city assessor, let's, uh, the assistant, would um, the city assessor address how you came upon the um, assessed value as almost doubling or explain how Mr. Goda did that for us? Thank you. Oh, certainly, not a problem. Um, I can tell you that what we did was we reviewed sales that occurred, <clears throat> pardon me, from January 1st, 2016 through December 31st, 2020. There were actually 17 sales that we would consider as market, and the average of those sales um, was 204535 the value, or excuse me, the sale prices ranged from 135,000 to 250,000. It all depended on the type of unit, the location of the unit, whether it was on water, off water, two, un two bedroom, four bedroom. But that was just um, a general analysis that we did um, for the purposes of this meeting. Okay, thank you. And my question to Chuck is, my presumption is that if the RDA chose to lift the 29 days, it would lift the 29 days for all of the properties and not a portion of the properties. Well, and, and, I mean, you could decide how you want to do it. It's currently written into the ground lease for all, you know, it's the underlying ground lease that includes this clause. So if you remove it from the underground underlying ground lease, you have removed it from everyone. Now, there is the additional complication of the code issues. Uh, and uh, what would what one potential option would be to offer uh, to individual unit owners or the buildings, and, and that's something that, that that's also a complicating factor is if, if you get sort of non-unanimity within a particular building, uh, you, you could offer to build that back in, uh, probably not as part of the ground lease, but in another way, in order to avoid some of those code issues that, that do arise. And, and those code issues do have to be dealt with. Okay, saying that another way, we could do either or, or both. Yes, uh, you know, there's a, if, if we sort of do both, um, there's sort of an issue of thinking through how to do that, but that's one of the reasons why, uh, as you noted, um, the most that can happen today is uh, beginning work on um, an amendment to the ground lease, we're not going to be able to put it into effect immediately today and just simply vote to take it out of the ground lease. The vote would be to instruct staff to remove it from the ground lease and, and begin the work on, on the replacement. Okay. All right. Um, thank you for uh, Ms. Talby and um, Attorney Mayor. Thank you for your comments. Um, let's go. Thank you, Chairman, can I just um, ask for one more additional uh, issue? Yeah. I just need to say one more thing. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. So I guess what I am asking this board to do is to table this until we're 100% sure that we understand exactly what will be needed with the buildings because if you are, if you are removing it from the ground zone, and there's a unit owner that doesn't want it removed, you're going to be required to do all these personal code changes. And so my request would be is to table the issue until we know 100% sure what all the changes need to bring to bring the buildings and the units up to code so that you don't have a unit owner who's going to be forced to have to make all these expensive changes without being able to speak that they don't want that. And, and, and I don't think many, obviously, as Charles has said, that, you know, it's complicated. So nobody knows exactly what that is at the current moment and that we wait until we know exactly what that is. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you. 
Okay, um, let's go to discussion among the authority and staff. Um, anybody on the authority want to uh, give a gut feeling about to remove 29 days or to not remove 29 days? Madam, can I first go ahead. See, uh, a, a question on uh, maybe for Peter? Uh, I believe Peter is representing the condo association, so that implies uh, um, a, a plurality, if you will, of, of folks that would sign on to this. And I think uh, it probably should be noted. And I, I think Marcia, your your affiliation also is with Blue Harbor. Yes, it is. Okay, so I mean, we've got a we've got a party here that is an owner, but they also have a uh, an interest in the the Blue Harbor property. So um, the fact that Peter is in representing the condo association, if we decide to move move forward with removing the 29 days and let the cards fall where they will, and all these properties have to be upgraded to meet code. Um, is that the vote through the condo association that the, this group of owners uh, agrees through a majority vote that they will allow these upgrades to be made? Or are we gonna end up dealing with individual ownership of either buildings and or units that are gonna object to this? Um, I guess the question is gonna be who is the voice of this entity? I'm assuming now it is, it is Peter but we are not going to take, I mean, we'll, we'll listen to the opinion of an individual owner, but, you know, our negotiation, if you will, would be the condo association as a group, as opposed to individual owners that are coming with an appeal. Could, Steve, could, you asked the same question that I asked of the city attorney when the city attorney and Chad and I were in discussion about this. Um, we will presume that Mr. Mayor, Attorney Mayor, is the voice of the condo association, and we can assume no other. So it's incumbent upon um, him and his group to uh, make that clear or not clear. But we negotiate with Mr. Mayor on behalf of the association. Uh, but good question. Good excuse, question. excuse me, Madam Chair. Can I? Um, uh, um, probably not. Okay, we will clarify that at another point. I, excuse me, um, Madam Chair, can I answer a, a question that was raised uh, and perhaps put something to briefly, rest? Briefly, Mr. Mayor, briefly, yes. briefly. No, no cost will be imposed upon unit owners who are not interested in participating in uh, outside of the Sheboygan Resort Operator Rental Program. That addresses the question. No, no cost for code compliance will be imposed upon owners who do not want uh, to to participate outside of Sheboygan, Sheboygan Resort Operator. This is not intended to be an imposition. Frankly, I don't. Um, this is this opens up a different can of worms. I don't think you can presume that somebody won't do a code enforcement or won't be obligated financially, but that's our city attorney's issue. Um, somebody else had a question when Steve spoke. I heard somebody else. This is Marsha Forsyth. Can you hear me? I can briefly, Marsha. Okay. Um, I am a, I'm a, an investor. My sister and I are an investor on the, in the villa. We own close to 30 units. And the issue that I have at this point is the board, the association board is coming to you and requesting a waiver. And there are laws in, in the state of Wisconsin regarding changes to declarations and bylaws uh, requiring a certain percentage of the vote. And I, as a unit owner of almost 30 units, have never been given an opportunity or invited to any meeting to give a vote at all. Um, I, you know, requesting, you're, you're indicating, they're indicating that there's going to be no cost to me with regard to these changes. But the problem I have, if I recall correctly, I own a unit, and someone keeps moving something and I'm getting feedback. Um, I own a unit that almost... 
Pardon me? Uh, if whoever has their microphone open would please close your microphone. We are getting an, an incredible amount of feedback. Thank and you. Okay, sorry, Marcia. Thank you. And, and the situation is, if I recall correctly, I own a unit in every building except for one. So are you saying the other owners of these units are going to pay the separation cost to make it to make them to code, and I'm not going to have to pay that? Because, I, like uh, I said, I believe I own one in every building except for one. Okay, um, Ms. Forsythe, we didn't say anything about the cost. Attorney Mayor did. Uh, our city attorney allowed that codes do have to be uh, minded, so that would be an issue that would have to be um, tweaked out if we decided to lift the 29 day. Our, okay. our issue is 29 days, yes or no, and then what happens thereafter is between, from what I am understanding, is between the condo association and the uh, condo owners and currently Blue Harbor. Well, I'd, um, like to, I'd like to make it clear that I have not been given the vote. So the associations in front of you asking for a waiver when they have not received the vote or had the vote. Um, and if they're planning on taking it back, there's no guarantee that they're going to get the vote to do this. So making a decision before that has occurred, I think is a little improper. Um, and then the second question is you're indicating that the assessments would, would go up based upon this, and me as an investor of you know almost 30 units and millions and millions of dollars, I'm not interested in my assessments going up. So I didn't buy into these in accordance with the declarations and the laws of our association to, 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 for, for a board to make a decision without following the laws of Wisconsin and the vote and increase these values and cost me money based upon my investment. I, um, I think that's improper. So I think we're, we're a little premature to have the city making a decision without the vote of the villa owners and me being the, 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 own, the majority of the, you know, almost, the, you know, a, a large percentage and have a large vote. Um, you know, okay, my, other thank question, you. My, my other question is, you know, by doing so and, and doing what you're indicating, there's only, there's 128 parking spots in this area on, in, the, in the units. There's 64 units. 124, four of them are for handicapped. So some of these units hold 14 people. So where are all these people going to park? So there's there's not enough infrastructure to even accommodate that with regard to you know putting 14 people or even in the two bedrooms they allow up to eight. Um, another you know that that will change and if you change the 29 days that also changed the occupancy of these units versus the rental unit versus a residential because it doesn't meet code with regard to how many people are allowed in the building. So parking, that, all the costs that are going to be um, incurred to make it to code, that your 29-day decision without the vote of the villa owners and, and the potential assessment increase, I just think is, is, is way premature. Okay, thank you for your comments. Um, Back to uh, Madam Chair, Jordan. I have an opinion. <clears throat> yes, David. Um, to me, to me, it seems that the association. I think you made the statement up front. We're just here to decide whether or not 29 days is something that we think it should be in there and it's fair and right. I think I'm an owner of some units in, in, in the Ostop program. We have similar rules and regulations, but those are all voted upon and coordinated by the condominium association. So it comes to a vote. And that's how we handle that. But there's no law given by government to tell us that we got to rent that for 29 days. I'd have never bought into Ostop doing that. We created that thing back in the day to try to help the original developers get this thing off the ground. I didn't think it was right then. I don't think it's right now. I think the people in the condominium association should take what Marsha said. If they got to spend this, they got to spend that, and they got to spend that, whatever those numbers are for code, for parking, et cetera as well as the assessed valuation going up, they need to take that in their co conversations together with Marsh and her sister only 27, the other people own whatever they are, 35 or 40, and they have to make a decision. But that should come to a vote amongst themselves, not us. I recommend Correct. we get rid of the 29 days and they go run their government governmental process in the association appropriately. If Marsha's voice isn't being heard, she should get hurt for her 27 units. But if she can't get to the majority, then it can't be 29 days. 
but I don't think that has anything to do with government legislating what they should or shouldn't do. I think we're wrong being in this to begin with, and I would highly recommend that we drop it as far as part of the ground lease and that those people that are owners and are involved run their own business and not the government tell them what to do. So, so to give you an answer on Thank the separation you. of dollars. Who is speaking? Me? Who is speaking? This is Marsha Forsyth again. Um, a All question, right, briefly, Marsha. Thank you. A question came up about the separation of dollars. So if you waive the 27, the 29 days, it is 276,000 that the villas did provide to the city and tourism. The additional cost on top of that, obviously, is Blue Harbor Resort, which also paid 888,000. So the city and the tourism would lose if you extend that. I assume you would extend it for the for the complete complex. Um, you're you're over 1.1 million dollars for the city as well as um, the tourism. Um, Chuck, city attorney. I'm not um, sure I understand that. What does that mean? Exactly. That didn't make sense to me. What that means is the hotel tax paid to the city and tourism was 888,000 for Sheboygan Resort as well as 276,000 for the villas. So the city as well as tourism would lose that money when you waive that because you're waiving it for the for the resort. It's it's the complete complex. It's all in one. I know the that the resort is owned by all the all the condominium owners, is it? It's only owned by one group. Correct? You and your sister own the resort, or your, you and your father? Uh, there's a different group of people that own the resort. I am strictly, a, I'm caught with regard to this as the villa owner. So my sister and I own the villa owner. It's a separate investment, not the same people who own the resort. Uh, and I don't understand how that changes that because they still would have to tax. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Well, 276000 yeah, is paid to the city and tourism per year. I got so that we, part. I'm talking about the 880. That doesn't go away. No, well, it no, does because, not go away. Well, that would go away because Blue Harbor is also asking for that. If they're saying you're going to do it for them, why would be they own half of the units too? So if, if right now my 27 over over half of the units, I think 30 some uh, units have signed on for Blue Harbor Resort to market them, and that is me including. So so you're saying that if I sign up for Blue Harbor, my units wouldn't allow that, as well as whatever Blue Harbor does inside their units. I, I, I think that you're you're risking the money from Blue Harbor as well as the villa. Okay, I'm going to stop Again, this no conversation. Sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is this may or may not be germane to 29 days. What it has told me is that there needs to be further discussion and further research on. Um, 29 days, what it entails, what the implications of those those things are, should we choose to lift it. Um, we presume status quo currently if the 29 days are there. We need to fully understand the implications and the people involved need to fully understand and agree what the implications are they might not agree that that should happen, but they have to agree that this would be a change. So my my thought would be that we do need to table this. It needs to go back to uh, the condo association. It needs to go back to Blue Harbor, and uh, further work needs to be done on that. Now, um, I would like to take the discussion back to the authority. Um, anyone else on the authority? Madam anyone Chair, else? Question. Yes. Um, who who is Mr. this? Steve? This is uh, Steve Harrison. I do Thank have you. A there seems to be this divide between the ownership that has ties to Blue Harbor versus the ownership that may be locally represented. And Marsha or Wendy, either one of you maybe can comment is what what's the difference of opinion? I mean, Marsha, you're implying that you don't want your assessment to go up, so your taxes end up going up. But what's the genesis of why you don't think this is a good idea, why somebody else would think this is a good idea? I mean, what what's the basis for the disagreement, if you will? Uh, because there seems to be some implication that this is a benefit that may 
accrued to Blue Harbor as an entity that's independent of the condo association. Uh, there's a feel of that, um, and maybe that's just totally unfounded, but what what's the different point of view between you as an owner and your next door neighbor who maybe only owns one condo, but wants to possibly look and say, I'd, I'd like maybe this to become my permanent residence. So Steve, I would love to answer that question. The concern here is you have villas that were never meant to be residential. They weren't built that way. They have one fire suppression unit that's um, monitored by Sheboygan Resort Operator for the entire building. You have one meter for water, one meter for electric, one meter for gas. You have 124 parking spots for 64 units. These were never meant to be residential. It wasn't set up that way. And so the concern is, is that if you have some people living in there long term and you have some people that are there just for vacation, you're going to have a conflict. You're going to have people that are running in the halls and there's going to be, you know, noise and parking and it just there's going to be so many issues that just see it as a huge detriment and that they will lower the value. And so that, that, is, that is part of the concern. The other concern is, is if this gets removed, then if that 29 days, then you're gonna have to update all the condo units and the buildings. And there hasn't been anything done to find out whether or not these can actually be brought up to code and what the cost will be to bring these up to code. So, you know, the whole idea is this was meant to be a resort destination, a resort community where people are coming and enjoying vacation. It wasn't meant to be a residential unit. They weren't built that way. They aren't structured that way. And to require somebody to have to put, who knows, anywhere from thousands to hundreds of thousands because there's been nothing that has been given to any of us to say, this is, go this is what's going to be required to bring your, your unit up to building codes under Wisconsin law. So these are the various issues that are on the table. And that is why I requested to table, to table this discussion, get all the specifications, get what's going to be required. Because once that 29 day is removed, are we then going to have to start immediately making, you know, alterations to the building and we can't rent them? I mean, we don't know this either. So it just, there's so many unanswered questions here that we're just saying, please table this for now. Let's get all the information together. But really, these, these units were meant to be for resort community. That is why in the various documents that the city put together at the beginning, that it says as a first class resort community, that was what the intention is. And to have people living there in a resort community, you, you're, go, you're going to have conflict. And so I hope that the answer. Part of that question is what the, uh, Mr. Soxie asked earlier, is why is it the government's responsibility or entity uh, or, or within its authority to require this? Why why can the condo association then do their own voice? adopt the 29 day or any of the regulatory issues that are now being enforced through a municipality. I mean, why, why does the city want to play a role in this? Yeah, assuming that we do all of our math related to the numbers. Uh, but again, we seem to have this discussion between you know, the New Harbor ownership and the, and the community ownership. Uh, and Steve, I, I completely understand your question. Um, having been a formal council member, I do understand that you don't want to get in between various outside entities. I understand the city's purpose Excuse me. Um, there is someone who is moving around, and maybe your microphone shows that it is off, but it is not. Just like my microphone shows that it is on, but it is not. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Madam um, Chair. You're welcome, Wendy. Okay. Madam so, Chair. To go back to your question, I do understand that this doesn't want to be involved in that. And that is specifically why I'm saying, can we just table this? Um, the Sheborgan Resort Operator can talk to the entire condominium association to figure out and to actually have a plan as to 
what will be required by the state. I, I get you shouldn't have to be involved in that, and that's why I'm asking to have this table. I do understand that your focus here is what is going to bring you the most money. And, you know, based on the letter that I had sent, I do believe that the most money is going to be to keep it as it is. I don't think that's our focus, what brings us the most money. I think it's a Thank fairness you. doctrine. And it isn't government's role to see who we can, we, we can get the most money from. This is a fairness doctrine that you guys have to put back in your system to work with one another to figure out how to do this. And I'm with Steve. I don't think this has anything to do with government. I don't think we should study this issue. That's for you owners to study. We shouldn't be litigating how that goes one way or the other. And I, I would like to recommend that this 29 days be waived. If you guys want it, you vote for it and you put it back in. If you look at what the costs are to make these improvements, assuming they have to be made, you figure that out. Maybe they, they'll vote the other way. If people want to sell their unit and get a fair value for that unit that's depressed today that they can't sell, it's another issue. This might not be everybody wanting to move down there. They want might want more liquidity and a better valuation for the project. None of our business again. None of our concern. So I humbly suggest that we pass this thing and move on and not kick the can down the road. Okay, somebody else from the authority, would you like to speak to that? Uh, Madam Chair, this is Chad in the Council Chambers. I would just like to get a clarification. Yes. I'd just like to get a clarification from Attorney Adams. Is it isn't the resort and the condo association on two separate ground leases? There's there are there is more than one ground lease. Yeah. Okay. Um, I am hearing that we also, I, I heard um, Mr. Soxie say that he doesn't think we have any business being in the 29 day, 29 day clause. Uh, we did initially, and apparently we did for um, cash flow for original owners. Um, <clears throat> what, what next steps? I'm, I'm a little concerned that uh, we've got some legal issues with one ground lease, two ground leases, uh, which is why we need to look at ground leases further, but maybe we don't. Chuck, you want to chime in on that? So, uh, you know, what I would say is this. What you don't, I don't think you want to just simply vote now to remove the 29 days because you've got the issues. We, we have not done the work on, on the, uh, you know, using the building inspectors and having them go and do the inspections and determine what needs to be done because we first wanted to make sure that it was worth their time to do it. Um, and if you, if you simply remove it today, suddenly it's gone and you have different codes that apply. Uh, and uh, I, I think what you need to do is if, if, if it is the direction of uh, the RDA to remove the 29 days, then the next step that needs to be taken would be to negotiate what the terms of the change to the ground lease are going to be. And that, as, as you've noted, the, the uh, condo association is sort of the legal entity that represents all of the condo owners. And so that's with whom we would do that negotiation. Now, they do have to act in good faith. They do have rules that they have to follow. Uh, there's at least allegations out there, I, and we have not looked into those allegations that they're not necessarily following those things. I think as you also noted, uh, Madam Chair, uh, we do have to uh, begin with the presumption that they are, going, that they are following uh, the rules that they have to follow, following condo law for the state of Wisconsin and those kinds of things. Uh, and there are opportunities for challenging. Um, if owners believe that that's not happening, there are opportunities for that. One of the, one of the concerns that I have that gets at sort of the, um, the you know, I, I think even those who have a more uh, libertarian <coughs> view of the role of government um, probably do need to be concerned about is that the removal does have an impact on individual owners. Uh, it does, it, it is likely to require them to take particular actions. 
because as much as we may say we don't want government to sort of govern, um, th there are other issues where the government does govern, and th those include those building code issues. Those are the primary issues in my mind uh, uh, that, that we have to deal with. Uh, but you could potentially have, you know, an individual owner saying that, you know, by changing the terms of the ground lease without my consent, you have cost me money. And th that's kind of the argument that uh, uh, Ms. Forsyth is, is, is making here, that, that she believes it's going to cost her money. Now, again, you know, where her initial uh, complaint goes is not necessarily us, it, go, it, it would be to the, uh, the condo association. Uh, and the condo association would need to show that they in good faith are, are having a vote and those, those kinds of things. And, you know, I don't know that any of that has happened, which is why we need to, we need to negotiate the change. Uh, and, and, the, and if that's the way you want to go, the motion really ought to be uh, to direct us to enter into those negotiations to, to remove that out of the ground lease. I think that's as far as you want to go. So moved. I hear a motion to enter into negotiations to remove the 29 days in the ground lease. Is there a second? I'll, sec I'll second. It's been moved by Foxy, seconded by Harrison. Anyone else on the authority have any other comments? Uh, I have a question of Chuck. Enter in, enter, entering into negotiations <clears throat> to remove doesn't necessarily mean we have removed. Is that accurate? That is accurate. I, my, uh, my opinion is that the final document will need to come back to you for your approval and all the various terms that change because it's, it's, it's not going to be almost certainly it's not going to be as simple as a single strike through. Okay, anybody else? Thank you. Anybody else on the authority? Um, uh, Madam Chair, I, I, I have a question yet for Chuck. Uh, un, under any of these, does the city incur any liability? So for example, if we pull this 29 days out, we don't have the potential of a, a condo owner coming back and saying they're forced into these upgrades because of a decision that we made. Would that be correct? They can, they can make that allegation. Uh, you know, again, I think we point them to that there is a process uh, that they need to follow. Uh, the, the problem would, would come if that process doesn't get followed, which is why I think we would, as part of the negotiation, would want to make sure that that process is followed. So if we, if we opt to... Um, if we opt to enter into negotiations, we have, in a sense, kicked the football down the, down the field, but we have not yet made a final determination because we are still collecting information. But that's where we're leaning. We are leaning toward removing 29 days. Is that fair to say, Chuck? I think that that's what it sounds like to me. I don't think you have the ability to just simply remove it today because you'd actually have to sign off on, you know, the terms of the agreement and yeah, yeah you have to approve that and we don't have that in front of us. Okay. Does everyone on the authority um, understand that? Do we need any other further clarification? Okay, there is a motion on the floor to enter into negotiations to remove the 29-day clause. Chair, Chair, we need to do a roll call. All right, we need a roll call because we are all on Zoom. Roberta okay. Flick. Uh, I can handle it, Roberta. Go ahead. Roberta flicky Pneski. Sure, thank you. Roberta, how do you... Uh, Chair will be first to the end. How do you vote, Roberta? Jesus. Chair will defer to the end of okay. the vote. Okay. Dave Soxie? Yes. Yeah. Steve Harrison? 
Yes. Dave, uh, James Owen? Yep. Amy Horst? Yes. Older person Mitchell? Yes. And Roberta Flicky Pineski? Yes. We have six eyes. Okay. Okay. Uh, we will then uh, send this back to staff <coughs> and uh, the respective parties. Um, uh, the two attorneys involved in both sides will start their process. And um, Chuck Adams, I think you will be our point person, or will um, Chad, or both? Uh, we're both going to need to be involved because I, I don't order the building inspectors around, so and, and they're going to be an integral okay. part of it. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So we will be we will be engaging both of those gentlemen. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Thank you to our guests for their time and energy. Uh, do we have anything else for the good of the order here? Okay. Hearing none, Chair will entertain a vote a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Horse, horse moved, Mitchell seconded. Are there any objections to adjourning? Hearing none, we are adjourned. Thank you very much. Bye.